Uh, we're going to be working with the A Little Cheesy stamp set tonight, and we're going to kind of be mixing and matching some other things as well. Um, it's going to be cute, but I'm going to make maybe one or two of the cards. I'm not going to make like the whole set of cards on the live because we'll be here all night. You guys know I'm, I'm a slow crafter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, welcome. My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Heart. You can find more information out about the projects that I make on my blog at stampingwithheart.blogspot.com. Um, like I said, uh, tonight we're going to be working with the A Little Cheesy stamp set here. It's so cute. Um, I tend to get really caught up in holiday projects, you know, early. So, Sometimes I have to pull myself out of that so that I go back to the all occasion cards that we all need, right? And I have been making a lot of thank you cards lately, but I've really kind of dropped off with birthday and I absolutely love the messaging um, in this stamp set, Your One Tough Cookie, where there's a wine, there's a way. Thanks for putting up with me. Um, it might sound cheesy, but I think you're great. I mean, these are so, well, they're funny and they're cute. Um, and they're all occasion, right? So I did sneak a little bit of Christmas in, but <laughs> I also did regular themes. So I'm really proud, really proud of that. Um, so welcome. Uh, just let me know. Uh, be sure to say hi, whether you're watching live or in the replay. I always love hearing from all of you. Let me let me know in the comments if you guys have this stamp set or if this is a stamp set that you guys are planning on getting. This is one of those that I feel like it can get a little bit lost. This is available in the annual catalog. Um, but uh, let me just kind of walk you through each of the cards as everybody's kind of jumping on. So what I tried to do, and I will, um, I'll go through the concept, but these cards are actually on the simpler side. And what I did was one version of the card is the stamps as a background. And then one version, the stamps are the focal point of the card. So we have sort of like our traditional layout with the focal point. And then we use our stamp apparatus to create a background um, with our stamp set. And this is like a really simple card because it's basically just all stamping, a little bit of coloring. Um, but that was the concept with each of these. So this was the wine theme. And then with our wine bottle here and sending cheer, I actually snuck in an, uh, another stamp set. And I think it pairs really nicely with a little cheesy. You guys know I have to mix and match everything. Um, so here is, there's a, you know, where there's a wine, there's a way. And then for bottled happiness, I used sending cheer. I used the wine bottle, the cork, the label. Um, and honestly, you could use wine knot also if you want to, but even from the sizing, I think that the sizing is actually really nice with this. Um, so that was the one for this one. And then here, I'll do this one next. Um, so in my family, we do pudding pies every Christmas. We do chocolate pudding pie every Christmas. So when I saw this, I was like, I have to do um, a, you know, like a, a pudding theme for Christmas because it just reminded me of that. So here we have the background version, right? And then here we have the focal point version. And then for the whipped cream, I actually used the pearlized enamel effects in white. Um, I thought I thought it turned out really cute. I don't even know if it's technically dry yet, but um, I thought that turned out really cute. So this is um, Sweetest Christmas Designer Series Paper. Um, Sweetest Christmas Designer Series Paper on here too. When you do paper piecing, you can save yourself um, a little bit of time with coloring if you don't want to use markers on everything. So that was the version for the pudding. And then um, here is the cookie. So for the cookie, I did something a little bit different. And then let me show you this. You guys will remember this set, so nothing's better than this is also in the annual catalog. And there are dies that will cut these out as well. So what I did was I mixed the cookies, basically. So for this one, we have a larger cookie. Um, and it's, you know, we use the sentiment, your one tough cookie. But I also wanted to use 
there is a die cut word that says cookies and I just cut off the S so that we could kind of get more of a focal point on this version. So we have the regular, a little cheesy um, chocolate chip in the background here. And then on this one, I actually used from Nothing's Better Than cookies kind of like bites coming in from the side and then the Stamparatus, uh, your one tough cookie all the way down. So if we had to pick one that has a focal point, it would be this one. But technically, I did do backgrounds for both of these because I loved the cookies. I love um, the way the cookies look in both stamp sets. And again, I think they actually go pretty nicely together. And then here um, is the actual cheese. So I used a lot of gray tonight um, for some reason. So basic gray on the wine, and then this is gray granite um, with soft saff or soft saffron. Listen to me, so saffron. So here it says um, it might sound a little cheesy, but I think you're great. So this is our gingham cottage paper. We have a little bit of this. Fun ribbon, the metallic mesh ribbon, which I don't get to use nearly enough, but Halloween's coming, and I really do like to use that for texture on Halloween cards. So we'll get there, but I thought it was just a nice little pop, um, especially because it's more of an unusual card. And then here, that was the focal point version, and then here is the one with the cheese for the background, and I kind of went a little bit crazy with the sequins, but I just thought they kind of looked like the holes in the cheese, so I kind of put them everywhere. You guys want to see the pudding card, really? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can do that. We could do pudding. Okay, so I'm glad you guys like that one. I I was thinking to myself, like, oh, I, I'm going to sneak a little Christmas in there. So let's grab some designer series paper that we can use with our pudding cards. Um, and we'll go ahead and do that. The idea is we want to get something that's pretty visual, like has a nice pattern on it um, that would basically look like a bowl. And I think that this green pattern would look good. Okay, so we could do this one. And let's see, this is this is cute. Um, oh, that's a good one. So in terms of like sticking with red and green, we could do these two. I think that would be cute. And that one's a little bit busy for bowls. Yeah, okay, so let's do that. And that is Santa Express, you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my Stamparatus. All right, and of course, it got messy, right? It got messy when we were stamping, but that's okay. So um, very slight differences. Um, ultimately, I don't really think it matters. So with this, it was real red and garden green. And with this one, it would be Poppy Parade. And I think that is shaded spruce. Okay, we're gonna jump into voiceover now. I'm going to speed up the video slightly um, here in the replay. Uh, if you wanna see the full length live, you can do that on Facebook. Um, so here's what we're gonna do with our Stamparatus today. And the concept is the same for every single one of the cards that you guys saw. We're just varying the images. So I wanted to use all four images and all four sentiments in the A Little Cheesy stamp set. Now with the Stamparatus, this is a tool that helps us stay straight and lined up. It creates really nice patterns for us. So you can see I am adjusting the hinges on the plate as I stamp across the paper. So you're going to get about three images. There's a little bit less than a full image on that third piece there. And you're going to stamp every other hinge if it's the pudding stamp. So it all depends on the size of that stamp. On the lower part where we're going to stamp this row again, I'm doing the full image bottom right, and then the other full image is top left. So just kind of creates a pattern for us where we have the full image, you know, on opposite sides. And then we have the middle full image, and then that image that kind of comes off of the paper will be um, on the lower left this time. So I really thought that that looked cute. Now, if you want to have less spacing between your pudding um, bowls or cups, whatever you want to call it, um, then you can adjust your stamp on your stamparatus each time, or you can stamp freehand. 
I really like the Stamparatus in background stamping because it creates a more professional, polished, clean look because you have the alignment that you need. So now that we've actually stamped our background, we actually need to stamp six more bowls for our paper piecing. So what I'm doing, I don't need to stamp the full image. I only need to stamp the bowl onto the designer series paper. And you can conserve your designer series paper too, right? Just, just so that you get the bowl image on there. And we still have a, a decent sized piece left that we can use on other things. And if you're going to do the second card, um, which is more of the focal point, you will need one um, stamped image and then one paper piece bowl for that card as well. So just something to keep in mind while you're stamping because um, when we're using a Stamparatus, it's more like an assembly theme type thing. So whenever you're making cards in bulk, the Stamparatus is such a fabulous tool. Um, I. I still have on my list, and I promise I will get it to all of you before the end of the year, um, My a, a trusty, a whole video and um, a PDF about the Stamparatus because it's one of my favorite tools, if not my favorite, um, that Stampin' Up! offers. So I had messed up one of my stamps there, so I was just kind of, kind of re-stamping over here on the edge, but it's entirely up to you as to how you want to do that. And don't feel like you have to have a Stamparatus to do that. You can, of course, freehand stamp with your clear blocks and just, you know, get six bowls just in the same way. So you use what you have. So if you don't love fussy cutting, you probably won't love paper piecing. But if you do, this is such a high impact and it really doesn't take long. It truly, honestly does not take a long time to do this. So we're gonna cut just the bowl. So that means we're gonna cut the pudding out of it. And that's so that when we glue it to the panel, it looks seamless, right? It's gonna look so real and cute. And that's why when we went for our pattern designer series paper, we wanted to use something that you would see a really cute pattern, but you wouldn't lose the aspect that it's actually a paper piece bowl. Um, and like I said, this is a great alternative if you don't want to color all of those images with markers or what have you. Um, if you do, I mean, you could have so much fun with it. But I, um, I used to do paper piecing more, but this is a great thing, a great technique that you can use for your Christmas cards. And then in terms of your pattern for your bowls, what I did was two colors on the top, the third on the bottom center, and then the opposite, of course. So if you want to do three red bowls on one row and three green, you could do that. If you want to alternate them like I did, you could do that. But it's a really cute look. And we are still going to be doing coloring with our Stampin' Blends. So I should mention that too. Um, I'm just using my paper snip scissors for this. I would say use precision scissors um, for paper piecing. Don't use big bulky scissors because that will be irritating. Um, when you have precision scissors, it's it's so much easier to do. It cuts the time in half. Um, and then when you need that seventh bowl, if you want to, you know, trim that out at the same time, you know, you want to sit and do all these things together, then you could do that too. Um, I am very curious to hear uh, in the comments if you feel like sharing with me whether or not paper piecing is a technique that you do. I often hear um, on my channel from those of you who enjoy fussy cutting and for those of you who absolutely do not enjoy it. <laughs> so, um, either way, you know, you can let me know. So I would recommend coloring the pudding before you glue on your bowls. It's just going to avoid any mistakes or you know, with your marker coming down onto the designer series paper up to you, you know. So I am using the soft suede combo. This is soft suede dark, which gives the look of what I think is chocolate pudding. And then I'm going to use soft suede light, which I think gives the look of butterscotch pudding um, on the other three. And again, um, with Stampin' Blends, they're alcohol markers. You do have the ability to blend and get very detailed with your coloring. I'm doing very simple, no shading at all, just a single color. And then we're also going to use gray granite, the gray granite combo on the spoons. Um, I'm going to use a touch of the, the gray granite 
on the um, the dollops of whipped cream as well, just to kind of give it a little bit of dimension and help it kind of pop off of the page. So for the overall spoon, we're gonna use light gray granite. And then in the little um, scoop part of the, the spoon, we're gonna do just a touch of gray granite dark to kind of give it a little bit of a shadow and a little bit of dimension, um, nothing major. And then um, when you have a, um, when you have a stamp on basic white, it can look a little bit flat. And then when you color it or you add just little pops of shading um, to the whipped cream, that can help give it a little bit more of a dimension. It can help it kind of pop off. It's definitely um, optional. You certainly don't have to do that. And another color that I really like to help with images um, that might look a little bit flat is Pool Party. I think Pool Party Light is like one of the best if you're doing shadows or outlines. But in this case, I just stuck to um, the gray granite. So I use gray granite light, but you could use dark too. It just depends on how dramatic you want your coloring to be. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to glue on our paper piecing bowls. And this is when you start to see your image really kind of come to life, your background really kind of come to life. Um, and then there is a combo pack of ribbon. It's garden green and real red ribbon um, that you can use. And I used it on this card because we have a, a little bit of white space in between the two rows of bowls. And I wanted something to break that up. And I, I didn't want to just kind of plunk my sentiment down. I wanted to have kind of like a texture and a layering element to it. It really helps to bring your background to life. It just it kind of all works together, right? Think of, you know, creating these backgrounds and paper piecing a little bit like a puzzle. I always think of stamping and creating images and cards as like assembling a puzzle, particularly paper pumpkin. I I always look at that as like a little challenge puzzle when I'm creating my alternate cards. Um, so anyway, you can see the way this is all starting to kind of pop off. And this is the Santa Express paper versus the original card, which was Sweetest Christmas. So whatever, um, you know, paper you have at home and whatever color themes you want to do, like if you like blue for Christmas or you like multi, you could certainly do um, those options too, right? Or if you want to make it more of a traditional food card or um, a theme card, you could do that too. So um, we're going to add the ribbon. We are going to stamp our sentiment um, as well. So what I wanted to show here was the color combo isn't the same because this ribbon is meant to go with Sweetest Christmas, but it still works. So it's not shaded spruce, it's garden green, and that's okay. I found that it was okay. So um, for those of you who weren't with me live, I actually did not have my Poppy Parade or Shaded Spruce cardstock in my office when I was filming. And I didn't want to leave everybody hanging to like walk across the house and get the other cardstock. So I ended up using um, Garden Green and, um, and Real Red as opposed to Poppy Parade and Shaded Spruce. So just know that was why I used the different colors because I had already had those pieces pre-cut, but I ran out of the Sweetest Christmas Designer Series paper and I did not think ahead in terms of getting the right coordinating color. So Garden Green wasn't bad at all. It actually still looked really cute, I thought, but I thought that Real Red was a little bit clashy with the... Um, with the poppy parade. So it's all um, to your eye and what you think, but I just wanted you guys to know why I used, you know, the different colors. So now that we have our ribbon on and I always tuck those edges behind our panel before I glue it down, um, we are gonna add a bow to this card because I thought it could really kind of use the little extra um, pretty, you know, on here because we have a background. And so now we sort of wanna decorate it up a little bit. Um, and then we're just going to do our uh, our sentiment on this stitched rectangle die. So this is actually the smallest rectangle die in that set. Um, almost looks like a square, but technically is a rectangle. And it fit perfectly for that pudding sentiment. Um, and I was just going to stamp that in, I believe it was Poppy Parade for this particular card. Um, and I pop this up on dimensionals and I put it really close to the ribbon, um, the bow, so that it kind of looked seamless. That was that was the goal. That was what I was looking for. Now, your poppy parade should be like a nice bright red and mine came out a little bit light. So 
I either need to re-ink my poppy parade or um, I need to just get a new one, one, <laughs> one way or the other. Okay, so just finishing up the bow here. Um, and this will finish up the two cards. So it's really cute to see uh, the sweetest Christmas versus Santa Express, although it's pretty subtle, isn't it? We still really went with that red and green theme. Um, now here is the focal point card. The focal point card comes together much more quickly because it's really just assembling um, our designer series paper layers. So again, this is Santa Express designer series paper. These are the three patterns that I went with. For our first layer, we're going to cut that traditional four by five and a quarter size um, for our A2 card, right? And then for the second one, we're going to cut three inches by five and a quarter inches. And then for the third piece, we're going to cut one inch by five and a quarter inches. Uh, and we're going to do a, a landscape layout or a horizontal layout for this particular card. We are also going to cut um, a scalloped contour die. Uh, it's kind of like a, it's not quite medium. It's, it's I think, the second smallest die in the um, scalloped contour die set. But that's what we're going to use for our focal point on this particular card. So right now, I'm just adhering our panels. Um, we don't need ribbon for this card. You could certainly add it if you want to. Um, we are going to finish off with some sequins here, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut this scalloped rectangle. Now on the original card, I had done two different layers. And then on this card, I thought I would just do a basic white version to keep it simpler because I thought the green on green might be a little bit too much. So um, I did a basic white panel and because the whole thing is basic white, I didn't have to worry about having a second layer. So we'll stamp our sentiment on this. Now you are going to stamp your pudding on a separate piece of the basic white cardstock. And we're going to do all of the same steps with our pudding, but we're going to um, fussy cut it out. And we're also going to cut another bowl um, with paper piecing just to kind of keep that theme. So on this one, I decided to use shaded spruce ink for the same um, sentiment or for the same greeting. I just think it's so adorable. Thanks for putting up with me. Um, and then I stamped that off closer to the right so that I had room on the left to put my um, pudding bowl there. And uh, just to be playful, I kind of set it at an angle, but of course you could do that straight too. So whenever you're stamping um, for this one, you can stamp on any piece of scrap paper. I'm going to use my paper snips to cut it out. Um, and again, we need to stamp that bowl in the designer series paper too. So um, you have to let me know in the comments if you enjoy the paper piecing, if that is a technique that you like to see. I would like to do that again before our Christmas season is through. Um, it is September 9th as I am recording this and I am celebrating my three year anniversary um, with Facebook lives in the month of September, if you can even believe that. And a shout out to Kathy for reminding me because I didn't even realize it. So I have actually been doing, um, Facebook lives and videos on YouTube for three years now. Oh my gosh. So, um, really, really crazy. Just wonderful. So again, um, no new steps here, aside from the fact that we're cutting out the entire bowl and the spoon. And you guys don't have to include the spoon if you don't want to, you know, get too detailed with your fussy cutting. But I think it's such a nice um, it's such a nice part of the image. I think it really just has so much character to it. So I would recommend keeping it if you um, are willing, you know, to do that and willing to kind of cut that little extra piece out. So we're just going to glue this straight down onto um, our rectangle and then we're going to pop the whole rectangle up on dimensionals. Uh, and set it off to the left. So center left, and then we'll do a couple of sequins. So the adhesive back sequins. Um, for the original card, I had used so much from Sweetest Christmas, but with this one, it still works. Um, you'll see it in, in just a moment. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to take these pearlized effects in white, and we're going to create uh, some 3D whipped cream. What I was saying um, on my live was you're going to want to set that aside so that it has time to dry. Those pearlized effects need time to dry. 
And I recommend a thinner coat as opposed to a thicker coat because then it will dry faster. Now I am using the white. Um, they're kind of like a frosty looking um, sequin. I hope that you enjoyed today's cards. You can shop with me on my blog, stampingwithheart.blogspot.com. I have a host code for the month of September. All of the information in terms of getting in contact with me or shopping with me are links in the description box below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. I do crafting and card making tutorials each week, and um, you can find much more content right here on my channel. So be sure to stay tuned for the next video and leave me a comment below. What did you think of these cards? Do you prefer a traditional focal point card or do you actually really like doing background stamping? Um, I would love to hear from you.